ions and ionic compounds. Okay, so today we're going to talk about ions and ionic compounds. And basically we're going to figure out how ions form, we're going to learn their characteristic charges, construct a proper formula, and then eventually generate a proper name. Uh, this is a pretty challenging topic, so be sure to practice as you go along and also with the problems in your book. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is vocabulary. Now, when electrons move from one atom to another, they generate species with overall electric charges. And these species are called ions. Um, if the ion is missing electrons or has fewer than, um, than would make it neutral, then it's called a cation. And those have overall positive charges. If the species has extra electrons, then it would be called an anion. And those extra electrons are gonna generate an overall negative charge. First thing to really keep in mind is that ions are only formed when electrons move from one atom to another. So we never have protons moving from one atom to another. Remember, if we moved a proton, that would change the element. So we can't do that. Any compound that's formed from positive and negative ions, it's gonna be called an ionic compound. Now, individual atoms can gain or lose electrons. And when they do that, they're called monatomic ions. When they gain or lose electrons, these individual atoms, they usually gain or lose a characteristic number of electrons. And so they have a, you know, basically a characteristic overall charge. So what does that mean? Let's talk about that. So the first rule to keep in mind is that metals tend to form cations. So that means that metals lose electrons and nonmetals pick them up. So we'll get to nonmetals in just a second. So metals tend to lose electrons and then they form cations. Every element that forms cations is a metal except for one, which is hydrogen. So hydrogen uh, forms a plus one cation. Now each element that forms an anion is a nonmetal. And remember from our previous discussion that anions have excess electrons, which gives them an overall negative charge. So the bottom line is that the electrons that the metal had, when it transferred them to the nonmetal, it formed a cation, and in the process, the nonmetal formed an anion. So let's take a look at these couple of examples down here. So we have magnesium 2 plus, and we have the bromide anion. Magnesium 2 plus, as you can see, it has a positive overall charge, so that is a cation. It's also a metal. If you look on the periodic table, you're gonna see that it's in group two, and the elements in group two are metals. Bromine, which is forming this bromide anion, it gained one extra electron, which is what that uh, negative one means, you know, so the one is assumed, but it means it's negative one, it's, it's gained one extra electron. Our magnesium over here, because the charge is two plus, that means that it lost two electrons. Let's look at alum, aluminum and oxygen. So aluminum, again, you guys would recognize as a metal, and it generates a three plus cation, which means it has lost three electrons. The oxygen anion here is two minus, which means that it has gained two electrons. And obviously oxygen is also a non-metal along with, with bromine. Okay, now the other rule to keep in mind is that most atoms form ions of a single characteristic charge. There are definitely exceptions to this, and so I'll show you that. But basically, you can memorize those ion charges right now, and in time, we'll learn a systematic way to uh, remember these characteristic charges. And we'll see that later on. Okay, so let's talk about plus one and plus two cation. Here are some, and you should memorize these, ions formed by losing a single electron. So notice that they're all plus one. Same thing, that plus one is assumed. These generally are plus one, and you can count on that for, you know, for normal circumstances. And these right here, uh, these can have variable charge. So just keep that in mind that that's possible. If atoms lose two electrons, then they will form these cations. So magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus, strontium, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, tin, mercury, and lead. Again, 
several of these have other charges that could be present. So iron, for instance, can be either two plus or three plus. But again, memorizing this list will get you very, very far in this course. All right, so ions can also be formed by losing three electrons. So here's a list of those, okay? And even losing four electrons. So titanium, tin, and lead can lose four electrons and generate four plus cations. Just keep in mind that all of these are metals. So metals are forming cations with the exception of hydrogen, which also forms a cation. All right, so here are our anions. Now these are all non-metals. In the first group, we have halogens that are forming negative one anions. So basically, if you look at uh, group 17 on the periodic table or main group seven, you're gonna see that uh, the halogens are in that column and characteristically, they gain one, one electron, which gives them an overall negative one charge. If they gain two electrons, uh, they're gonna form a two minus anion. And so you can see in sulfur and selenium are also in that group. And then finally, there are some elements that are gaining three electrons characteristically, and that includes nitrogen and phosphorus. This is posted, and you can also find it at uh, sciencegeek.net. Okay, so here's the website where I got this awesome periodic table. So the top is a bunch of uh, polyatomic ions. So these are ions that are uh, bonded together. They don't break apart. Um, and so basically the charge on each of these is the charge for the entire polyatomic ion. So that's what polyatomic means, more than one atom ions. All of these really should be memorized so that you basically, so you recognize them, you're gonna need this for naming and also assembling ionic compounds. Other things on here, you can see that the characteristic charge for various elements is, is given. Okay, so if you wanna just, you know, you don't have to memorize all of these, but if you wanna just study this and, and get the idea of the pattern, then that would be a really good idea. You can see these elements that have several characteristic charges, okay? And here's iron that we talked about earlier. And also the anions are also represented on the same chart. And so we've seen some of these before in our discussion. The noble gases, they are not gonna be forming ions. They're, you know, by definition, inert. Okay, so let's talk about putting together formulas for ionic compounds. Now, when we write a chemical formula for an ionic compound, we call it an ionic formula. It always has a cation and an anion, so it's never going to be formed between two cations or two anions. And the way to really remember that is that opposite charges attract, so they're going to be attracted together. That's going to form that ionic compound. But we, we really can't imagine two positively charged things attracting. They're going to be repelled. And same with two negatively charged things. They're not going to be attracted to each other. They're going to be repelled. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Whenever you're constructing an ionic formula, you need a cation and an anion. The other key point here is that the charges, so here we have sodium chloride. So here's the sodium cation and the chloride anion. Notice that this is plus one, that's negative one. So one minus one is zero. So the overall charge on the compound is zero. And so those, those charges must balance in, and come up with a neutral compound in the end, a zero charge compound in the end. Okay, now sometimes we have a two plus cation and we need to balance the charges and if we want to make magnesium fluoride, then um, if we only add one fluoride anion, so if we bond those two together, then we're still going to have an overall plus one charge on our compound. So that means we actually need two fluoride anions to balance out the charge on the two plus magnesium cation. So when we write the formula, we're going to write magnesium. We have one of those and there's a, an assumed subscript one here and then fluoride we're gonna have two of those. So this subscript two represents the fact that we have two of them. Now, it is conventional to use the lowest ratio of ions. So in other words, having magnesium subscript two, fluoride subscript four, while not incorrect, that's not a conventional way to write magnesium fluoride. We wanna use the lowest ratio possible. Okay, so here's a little bit of practice for you. So pause the video and write the pro proper ionic formula for each of these two, actually three sets of ions. 
So pause it and give it a try. Okay, so let's start with calcium cation and chloride anion. So we need two chloride anions to balance that charge on that calcium two plus ion. So we have to, we have to neutralize all of that charge. So we have two plus minus one minus one equals zero. So we're gonna get calcium chloride and that subscript two, we know that we need two chloride anions because the cation has a positive two plus charge. So we, we know that we need two of those to balance out that charge. When we look at aluminum three plus and the fluoride anion, again, it's minus one and the aluminum cation is three plus. So that means we need three of those negative, negatively charged fluoride anions to balance out that charge on the aluminum three plus cation. So we're gonna write a proper ionic formula as aluminum, so assumed subscript one, and then the three fluoride anions. Okay, so this, is, this one's a little bit trickier. So notice that we can't just use one and one or one and two and fully balance out all of that charge. So neither charge is a perfect multiple of the other. So that means we have a little bit more challenge. We're gonna have to find the least common multiple. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, let's look at this guy first. Uh, if we multiply it by two, then we can get a plus six, uh, plus six overall charge. If we multiply the charge on the oxygen anion by three, then we'll get a negative six charge. And so notice those will cancel. So if we take two aluminum and three oxygen, then we're gonna have plus six minus six and that charge cancels out perfectly. So that means we have to have basically six plus and six minus, and so our least common multiple in this case will be six. So to get six plus, we have to use two aluminum three plus ions. To get six minus, we need three oxygen two minus ions. So the proper ionic formula is gonna be aluminum subscript two, oxygen subscript three. So watch out for that. Anytime you have uh, a situation where the two ions, the charges are not perfect multiples of each other, you're gonna have to look for the least common multiple. Now let's say that you accidentally had aluminum four and oxygen six. So as I mentioned, that would not be technically incorrect. That's the right ratio. It's just not the lowest ratio. So you would be able to see that you could divide both of those by two and get the least ratio possible. Okay, so in summary, ions form when atoms gain or lose electrons. So ionic compounds have a positive ion and a negative ion, and the total charge must balance. So you need the total positive charge balancing the total negative charges. Groups of atoms can have an overall charge, and we saw those on our table, and those are uh, polyatomic ions, which we'll talk about more later. And eventually we're gonna talk about a simple system of naming for ionic compounds. That'll be coming in future videos.